We're Sharon and Phil, and we're spending a month living on the tropical island of Saipan. In today's video, we take a day trip to Manyagaha Island Resort. Then, there's great excitement in Saipan as one of the biggest cruise ships ever to dock here arrives. We'll also show you inside the island's biggest yet unfinished building, so join us. Good morning! Today, we are off to Manyagaha Island. Uh, so, we've come down to Smiling Cove to take the boat over to Manyagaha. Uh, it's just over there. I think it's $15 per person for the boat ride and then I think it's $10 entry fee um, to get onto the island. Um, if you have a local ID you can you can get it you can get onto the island for free. Um, but yeah, so we're just about to get on the boat. <laughs> It's not what we were expecting at all. I guess we thought it was going to be more like when we were in the Maldives and we were taken out to that like deserted island to go snorkeling and there was like nothing there. But here it's been kind of developed. There's paths, there's structures. Some of them are kind of off bounds at the moment. I think, I don't know if they I think were they're damaged. renovating. I think they're renovating yeah, a lot of it just now. Maybe it was damaged by a typhoon or something. But there is like a restaurant, like there's a, well, a small cafe that sells cold drinks and snacks. Pretty cool. So it's a really small island, so we decided to have a little wander down to the bottom of the island and explore a little bit. So yeah, this part I think is like a bird reserve because there's signs saying do not disturb the birds. So this monument is dedicated to Chief Agu Rob. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Agarubu. Agarubu. <laughs> Apparently he sailed here in 1815 from the Caroline Islands uh, to resettle his people on Saipan after a typhoon destroyed their islands. And he's buried here on Manyagaha Island. I think he's uh, a bit bigger than he would have been in real life. No, not really. He's almost lifelike. Mm -hmm. If I stood up there, I'd be about that tall. Kind of a weird vibe here because it feels like a resort, like it should have a hotel here. But, and it's got toilet block and things like that, but it definitely has that vibe of a small 
Island Resort. Pretty cool. Funny thing is, it is very busy. I mean, there's a lot of tourists here today. excitement in Saipan today because a great big cruise ship is in port. It's the MSC Bellissima. We don't get many cruise ships coming in here. They said maybe about once a year or so. So it's quite uh, quite a big deal. 4,000 passengers and 1,000 crew. Uh, so the island is absolutely packed today. 900 people were going to Manya Gaha. Uh, so I'm glad we went on Monday when it was a bit quieter. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, otherwise known as the casino on the island. You've probably spotted it in some of our videos already because it's the biggest building on the whole island and it's unfinished. The story is that a Chinese company wanted to build this super casino and they started building it in 2014, but a super typhoon hit in 2018 shortly followed by the COVID pandemic in 2020 halting construction. Since Chinese culture and the casino industry are strongly influenced by superstition and luck, this was considered a very unlucky series of events, so work was never resumed. The casino is still sitting here in all its glory, yet empty and unfinished. So let's go take a look around. Standing right here in front of it, you can really get a sense of the huge size of it. If you ask the security guard, she'll let you step into the foyer to gawk at the two huge crystal dragons hanging from the ceiling. Each cost $1.5 million and weigh 20 tons each. They also have three massive lucky dragon eggs. The rest of the building is unfinished and unsafe to enter. Next to the casino is Ohas Bulanju, selling a huge selection of breads and sweet treats, as well as good coffee and a good selection of ice drinks. Looking baked goods, but hardly anything that's gluten free. Other than they have macarons. So I went for a cream, a strawberry cream macaron. Jo Tan has a range of grocery stores all over the island. Today we're at Jo Tan's superstore, which looks very much like Costco, even the signage, and sells a lot of Kirkland products. Definitely feels like Costco in here. Oh. Definitely the biggest shop on the island though. Got your electrical goods. Your freezers, fridges over there. Load section. No, they were nine dollars before. Here they don't have the same laws as back home where once something's out of date you just cannot sell it anymore. But here, out of date things, they can still sell them for reduced price. But it says no refund, no exchange. But yeah, we've bought a few things and it was quite good. We got these the other day for nine dollars and now they're selling them off for two twenty five. So, you need some more. And they're only like four days older. Mmm, blue agave, a two pack. You get this back home for like six pounds. Seventeen dollars. Price tag. 
Phil's excited because he found dairy free, lactose free ice cream. I'm in the chocolate place. Ooh. Nice. Okay. And what's it doesn't say a price on it, does it? No, there was a price. I think it's like six dollars, six and eight. Uh huh. So about about the same price as Ben and Jerry's. Mm. Look at all the Ben and Jerry's that they've got. And Hagen Bass. And it's not too expensive, it's like six ninety nine, seven dollars. My favourite Ben and Jerry's peanut butter cup. Mm. Yeah. Even have hot dogs and pizza. It's definitely Costco. <laughs> We're going to the cinema, which is right over there. Okay, uh, we're having gluten-free pasta carbonara. So I have cooked the pasta in the rice cooker. Yeah, I was like, how am I gonna cook pasta? And I was like, hey, I'll just have to do it in the rice cooker. And it worked. So this is pasta made from chickpeas. Um, you I haven't actually seen it on the island. I didn't buy it. Someone, a friend of ours who's gluten-free uh, gave it to me, so I actually, don't know, I don't think you can buy this on the island. I think it's a special order. Very simple, apart from the pasta, there's only five ingredients. So the ingredients are two garlic cloves and we're not gonna chop them, we're just gonna bruise them with the knife a little bit to release the flavor. Uh, oh, okay, I kind of crushed that one, but that's okay, that's fine. Couldn't get pancetta, so I've got bacon. Now for the pack of bacon, it was like, 12 rashers for five dollars so not too pricey not too bad uh parmesan cheese this big tub of ready grated cheese i don't have a grater was 11 dollars. so a little bit pricey but it's ready grated and phil eats a lot of parmesan because it's lactose free so he can have that so he has it on crackers and he has it with nachos and so yeah we use it a lot uh Butter with canola. This was like six fifty for this, and then the eggs. Actually, I'm only going to use three eggs. Um, eggs vary in price. So the first time I bought eggs, uh, it was two ninety nine for uh, a dozen, and then this time it was four dollars for the same amount. And the reason for that is when the shipment comes in, they are at their highest price. But as they go down, they lower them in price to sell the last of the stock off. So you okay. get them cheaper as a low stock, but you don't always know when that is. It's cheaper if you buy like huge stock. Like you can buy like five dozen. Okay, so I don't have anything to measure, so I'm just gonna have to make a guess. 50 grams, eh, we'll go for that. Let that melt. Okay, so let's add the garlic cloves. Ooh, garlicky. And I will add the bacon. So we're going to fry that together for about five minutes until it's nice and crispy. Okay, so the bacon's looking nice and crispy. I'm just going to remove the, the garlic cloves now and discard them. Rather than drain the pasta, which I don't have a colander anyway to drain it, but it, it says just to lift it out. Um, reserving some of the liquid. I've beaten the three eggs and mixed in some of the grated parmesan with the eggs. Again, it was a guesstimate. So I'm gonna add that in now. I always think that pasta carbonara is like the Italian version of a full breakfast. Like bacon, eggs, cheese, and pasta instead of bread. So we just need to let the egg cook okay so there wasn't like a lot of cooking liquid left i think because you know with uh with gluten-free pasta quite often it's it's quite starchy so it i think a lot of the liquid was kind of already in there so there it was it was kind of moist enough so i don't really feel like we need to add any more moisture uh so i think pretty much it's ready to serve we said we'd come back up here another time 
because the time that we came up here for a run, it was dark by the time we got up the top. Come up again, sunset. So this is a nice area up here. It used to be landfill apparently, and now it's all being grassed over. And it's a nice recreation area. And we can see the big ship leaving. Bye, a messy bellissima. We've only got a week left in Saipan, but we still have a lot to see and do, so join us in the next episode when we finally get to hike to Bird Island, swim in the grotto and visit the highest point on the island. Subscribe and hit the notifications bell to see you there!